Um, with that, I'd like to welcome uh, Senator Stefano to the podium. And there's been a lot of things said this morning. I have a bio here, but I'm not going to read that bio because I think we all know her. <laughs> After she finishes, then we'll have our senator from Ohio, Senator Brown who's no stranger, and after that we'll have uh, Congresswoman Marcy Capter on the phone. Great. Thank you very much. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It is wonderful to be here on Toledo with all of you, particularly my my partner. You know, sometimes they say partner in crime, but when you're in politics, you better not say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Senator Sherrod Brown and I, you know, Sherrod's a senior member of the Agriculture Committee, and uh, Terry, we, we wouldn't have uh, this provision if it hadn't been not only a partnership with all of you, but uh, Senator Brown was uh, with me every step of the way, fighting together, not only to make sure we got the right conservation projects, but that Great Lakes was written on every page <laughs> of the conservation title, which is what we did. So it's wonderful to be here with, uh, with all of you. Um, our Deputy Secretary, I was on the phone a little bit uh, before coming over, she feels uh, very bad, obviously, that she can't be here. But USDA has been a wonderful partner. And I knew they were going to put this together right because the person who actually wrote this for me, senior staff person Tina May, they stole and put her in charge of implementation. And at first I was very frustrated. And then I thought, no, no, this is good. Because <laughs> she wrote it. She knows how we're supposed to implement it. And I knew that uh, she would really put it together well. So. Uh, we're, we're also glad to have uh, Jamie Clover Adams with us from Michigan Department of Agriculture, which is uh, taking a lead role in this partnership project. And our friend, Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur, who I believe is going to be on the phone, again, talk about somebody. She is the person on agriculture and conservation and a whole range of things. We work together on local food systems and water protection, and I know she wanted to be here as well, and so I'm sorry that she can't be here. And I have to say thank you to the mayor. Your mayor, who was a strong voice at our hearing. I wanted to make sure that, and in fact, uh, the, we did two hearings uh, before the end of the year in uh, November and December, and the, our last two hearings, one of them was on water quality, and I wanted to make sure that the mayor was there, speaking not only for Toledo, but southern Michigan, as you know, and the Royal County. I mean, this, this went beyond just the city of Toledo, but the mayor's voice was very, very powerful. So, so whether you're born in Michigan like me and lived in Michigan my whole life or in uh, northern Ohio or frankly anywhere in our Great Lakes states, the Great Lakes are really part of our DNA. And uh, they're part of our way of life. It's drinking water, it's fishing, it's boating, it's swimming, uh, but it's who we are. And so uh, it's so critical that we be uh, protecting our waters. And we went into the, the farm bill negotiation, five-year farm bill. I won't go through how tough it was. Senator Brown and I uh, uh, commiserating with our Republican colleagues. We, we, we had to do it twice in the Senate. We actually uh, uh, passed it once in 2012, and Senator Brown was kind enough to come up uh, my way to Dundee. We were at Cabela's talking about conservation and what we had done, right? Many of you were there. Uh, didn't get done in the House, so we went back again. Finally got it to passed and signed up to say at my alma mater. I mean, I realize I'm you know, in Ohio State territory, but as a <laughs> Michigan State person, I was really glad the president signed the Farm Bill um, in Michigan in 2014, so we got it done. I was asked this morning on a call, driving over, um, you know, how this is different in terms of conservation. When we went into the negotiations on the Farm Bill, I started by saying, let's not just protect what's there. Let's look at everything. What works, what doesn't work, what duplicates something else. It's not working, let's not do it anymore. Let's not fund it. If it is working, let's do more of it. Uh, if it's duplication, let's figure out how to streamline. And there is not a bigger example of the success of that than our conservation title. Number one, this is the first time in a five-year farm bill that we are spending more money in the conservation title than in the commodities title. This is significant as a tool for agriculture moving forward. And our farmers support that. And then secondly, we reorganized it, and you'll hear a lot about this continually. The Deputy Secretary talked about it, to change the way we do funding and make decisions. So instead of saying, we're from Washington, we're going to tell you how to do this in Western Lake Erie, we say, OK, you tell us. 
this has got to be a partnership. You know, our farmers and ranchers are frankly the, the front line stewards of the land. They water and, and land preservation is part of who they are in their daily life and their business. So let's support with tools with our farmers on how we can do the right thing and how give them the tools to do what they want to do, uh, which is the right thing. How do we work with business? How do we work with cities? How do we work with our great universities? All of them in Michigan and Ohio. <laughs> how do we bring together the, what we know on research? Cooperative extension. How do we take what we know and support best management practices? So given all of that, what is important number one about this project is it's part of a reorganized view on how we do conservation, driven by the community with support from the federal government through the Farm Bill. The Great Lakes region will receive over $40 million in total, and it's matched dollar for dollar. So it may be matched by actual money, it may be matched by technical assistance, it may be matched by research, but we're talking about uh, Possibly, we don't know for sure, but from everything we can see, it looks like the largest investment for the Great Lakes in terms of water quality that possibly we've ever had. So $80 million uh, coming in. And the biggest project's right here. The biggest project is right here. And that's not by accident. Uh, it's because of all of the work of everybody in the room. It's about the sense of urgency. Uh, we know that there have been issues for a long time. It, they were amplified by what happened. Uh, with the city, uh, but it's because of the need to solve the problems and the commitment and expertise of people in this room. There were 115 projects across the country. Uh, this project, as you know, is giving 17.5 million, double with the match, so we're talking about $35 million coming in here. This is added, by the way, to other things we have done through the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. Uh, we have, at other points, as you know, announced dollars coming in last year, a number of months ago, and so on. But this is a structure through which to do the right thing in terms of how we manage and solve the problem. Benjamin Franklin once said that when the well's dry, we know the worth of water. <laughs> and I, I certainly think we understand uh, what happens when we have this kind of a, a crisis. So we don't want to have happened uh, what happened uh, last August, again, in southeastern Michigan or in Toledo. We know there's not one silver bullet. There's a lot of things that need to come together. We need to support infrastructure, public infrastructure on our water and sewer systems. We need to do a whole range of things. But this is an important part of it. It's a very important long-term part of it. Uh, we want to make sure those algae blooms go away, that folks can drink the water and cook with the water and, and take a bath and brush their teeth and fish and, uh, and enjoy all the Great Lakes. So I just want to say thank you again. This is the largest partnership project, 46 different partners. Now, that may just sound like a number. I mean, that's a, lot of, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of groups, conservation groups, environmental groups, business groups, farm groups, you know, all uh, agriculture groups, the city, the universities have come together to put this uh, together to solve this problem. So this is the beginning, it's not the end, but for the roughly 25 million folks who live and work in the Great Lakes, uh, this is an important day, an important time, and we're looking forward to working with all of you to show that this type of partnership works, and that in the end, it is not just about next August in the water or the next office, it's about our kids and our grandkids and what we are leaving to them. So congratulations. <laughs>